Good morning and happy Sabbath. God is good and all the time. You know, this Sabbath is dedicated for our young kids in the church. It's a Nepean Children Choir Sabbath, and um, they're a little bit late. They are coming, so while we are waiting for them, uh, we'll take a few announcements that we have that we want the church to be aware of. Yes, so the first on the list is uh, the hour of prayer. I know we are very familiar with what this is about. We are encouraging everybody to go on our church website on Sundays, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. There's a Zoom link. Bring your burden to the feet of Christ because he is a prayer answering God. The second on the list is Wednesday Bible study, Encounter Bible study. Uh, we are studying the book of Philippians, and um, this coming um, Wednesday to be focused on um, Philippians chapter 2, verse 19 to 30. We encourage uh, everybody to come and study the book of Philippians because Philippians um, is a book of comfort, and we encourage everybody to join for study. Um, and I know tomorrow is the fundraising event, um, encouraging people to join. I know the announcement is gone, the registration has happened, so we're encouraging people to show up tomorrow uh, if you've registered and come support our Power Founder group. Um, again, the Orleans Church is um, giving this notice of relocation uh, to the Grace Presbyterian Church. And the date is next Sabbath. So next Sabbath, they are going to this new location. The address is there. So those of you, or if you want to visit the Orleans Church, um, they have a new location, and you can take note of the address and the location where they are. This is the final call of the Left Behind. I know we have a lot of stuff in the courtroom that, you know, the, the, the deacons and the deaconesses have put together. We're encouraging people to check in today to make sure that if there's any item that belongs to you, you'll pick it up. Today is the final call because after today, we are going to donate those items. So please see Dahlia and uh, make sure that you get what you think belongs to you in that box or else it will be donated after today. I know this announcement is a repeat, and um, we still, as a church, willing to sponsor any ch children age six, uh, 8 to 16 in our church to go to Camp Frienda. So please, uh, we encourage you all, if you have a child, uh, the church will be willing to sponsor ten hundred dollars per youth to be part of this uh, summer camp at Camp Frienda. I know that, you know, there was a distribution of bags, you know, we are collecting the bags, so please check in with Dahlia if you have stippled the bags together as you were instructed, um, and next week is where we are going to distribute it at the various location in Bar Haven. So there's a video, and I want us to... Um So we are having technical challenge with sound. I don't know what Ruben is saying, but we need to bring those back. If you brought it today, check in, making sure that we have the bags. Next week, please, if you have any bag in your possession, try to bring it, because next week we are going to do the distribution of the bags. So please, we encourage everybody to do so. All right, so we'll give, give a few minutes for our young ones to join, um, join the stage, and the praise team will take over from here. We may need more. We may need more chairs. Hi, church, and happy Sabbath from here in Italy. 
just wanted to give you a quick update uh, on the food drive. Uh, first, I want to thank everyone who helped staple the flyers to the bags. Um, you can drop them off in Pastor Bob's office. And if you have any um, problems finding the location, please ask uh, one of the deacons or deaconesses. And then secondly, um, we'll need help next week, uh, June 10th, delivering all the bags to the, to the homes. Um, we'll be delivering to about 3,000 residences this year. So please come out and help us. It shouldn't take more than an hour. Um, so you can bring your lunch or you can, you can eat your lunch after. Um, that's, uh, that's it. And then uh, on June 17th, uh, we will be picking up the bags um, after Sabbath. Um, thanks, church, and have a great Sabbath. And with that, we are going to all join together, our voices, to give God praise and glory. Our first song is number 185, Jesus is all the world to me. Number 248.
love Jesus so much, we are going to tell the story of Jesus, and that's our opening song, so I'm going to ask you to jump, to stand, please. Tell me the story of Jesus. the kids can you come for children's story Good morning, boys and girls. Can any of you tell me a miracle from the Bible? Uh, 
when God raised Lazarus from the dead. Amen. When Jesus made somebody see. Anybody else? When Jesus rose from the dead. When he healed a blind man. Okay. Jesus performed many great miracles, and his disciples got to witness them. I'm going to, t I'm going to tell you a story from the New Testament, Matthew chapter 8. Jesus and his disciples were, tra were traveling in a boat one night, and Jesus fell asleep at, after, tr at, after a trip. A trend, a trend, a trend day, day of preaching t to the people without any warning, without, with, without any warning, a rush storm c came upon them and they were terrified. That that they would that they would drown. Out of their fear, they they woke they woke Jesus and asked him to save them. O oh Lord of Oh, you of, li of little faith, Jesus said to them, why are you so afraid? Jesus then t turned to the, st the storm and rebuked it. The, the wind and the waves were completely calm ag once again. His disciples were amazed in awe of his power. Does, any does anyone know the moral of the story? He calmed the seas. Okay. Anybody else? He calmed the storms. Okay. Anybody else? All things can be done through faith in God. I want you to personalize it. Does anyone have any ideas? See, I can do all things. Okay, so repeat after me. Say, I can do all things through faith in God. And who wants to pray? Thank you, God, for the Lord's so sweet. Thank you for the things you give us. Um, stairs us and have food, stairs us and have water, stairs us and have everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. The converse of the gospel were one of a heart and one of a soul. One common interest controlled them, the success of the mission entrusted to them, and covetousness had no place in their lives. Their love for their brethren and the cause they had espoused 
was greater than their love of money and possessions. Their works testified that they accounted the souls of men of higher value than earthly wealth. It is God who blesses men with property, and he does this that they may be able to give towards the advancements of his cause. He sends the sunshine and the rain. He causes vegetation to flourish. He gives health and the ability to acquire means. All of our blessings co come from his bountiful hands. Those who hard to fail with the love of Christ will follow the example of him, who for our sake became poor, that through his poverty we might be made rich. Money, time, influence, all the gifts that they have received from God's hand, they will value only as means of advancing the work of the gospel. Thus, it was in the early church, and when in the church of today, it is seen that by the power of the Spirit, the members have taken their affection from the things of the world, and that they are willing to make sacrifices in order that their fellow men may hear the gospels. The truth proclaimed will have a powerful influence upon the hearers. Should means flow into the treasury in accordance with this divinely appointed plan, a tenth of all the increase and liberal of offerings, there will be an abundance of, for the advancements of the Lord's work. Amen. Or to collect our morning's tithe and offering. If possible, may we kneel. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for gathering us here on this wonderful Sabbath day. I ask you to be with us, to fill this room with your presence. As we lift, your, as we lift up your name, you will fill us with your spirit of love and care. Heavenly Father, we come before you humble, aware of our sins, and ready to repent. Lord, forgive us, for we have sinned before you. Dear God, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you um, for this day. Thank you for the nature outside and all creatures you created. We give thanks for the week, the beautiful week we had, for our family, and for this amazing church. Amen.
Also, thank you this morning for the offering which you gave us. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to be able to give back our tithes, give back your tithes, and give a free will offering. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For to us this child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Now imagine yourself facing four boxes, each representing something of utmost importance. These four gift boxes. The first one is the wisdom box. This box contains an opportunity for you to acquire knowledge and understanding. When you open this box, it unlocks the treasures of profound insight allowing you to explore and comprehend fundamental questions of life. Questions like, who am I? Why am I here? And where am I going? This box holds the key to unravel the mysteries and gain deeper understanding of your existence. The wisdom box. The next box is the power box. And this box contain or represent an ability and authority that surpasses every human limitation. It manifests itself in the form of a miracle. If you have this power box, what contains within will help you to influence 
conquer obstacles, overcome limitations, and accomplish what ordinary human cannot. The power box. Then next to the power box, we have the box of eternity. This box gives hope so that we can face our greatest fear, which is death. Opening this box and accepting it bestowed on us an eternal life, allowing us to beat decay, allowing us at some point to be able to be adorned with immortality. The last box is a box of peace. Opening this box will surround you with undeniable sense of peace, even amidst the chaos and the turmoil that is going on in our world. It grants this profound peace that goes beyond comprehension, bringing within yourself and those around you tranquility. If you have envisioned yourself that you have all these four boxes, imagine yourself and you have one choice, a singular opportunity to select one of these boxes. Which one will you pick? Power, peace, eternity. eternity. All right. But you see, the beauty of this is that, or the beauty of this situation is that it lies on the fact that you are not confined to select just one box. If you can have all the four boxes, if you accept Jesus as your personal savior, because the text that we read and the song that our choir sang so powerfully is from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. It says, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This child represents or embodies wisdom in whom are hidden the treasures of knowledge and understanding. This is not an ordinary child, because in, this, in the hand of this child is the sense of power, authority, command, and miracle, and conquer obstacles that may arise. This child brings with him promise of eternity, because he is the everlasting father. The assurance that there is life that transcends time and space. And this child offer peace and harmony that transcends all understanding. Friends, by giving us Jesus, God has given us the greatest gift. We don't need to look for these four gifts separately because Jesus embodied them all. In giving up his son, he poured out to us all heaven in one gift. In giving us Christ to the world, God gave all heaven. And the verse says, he emptied heaven to earth. So, the children choir and our theme for this morning service is Jesus is my all in all. Because we know that Jesus is my king. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my master. Jesus is my God. Jesus is my savior. He is my redeemer. He is my healer. He is my deliverer. He is my provider. To some of us, he is our father, our friend, husband, my beloved. Jesus is my all in all. Amen. For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Romans 5 verse 10.
throughout the first four chapters of the book of Romans, Paul paints a powerful picture of the condition of man. All of us, all of us, regardless whether you are Jew or gentle, male or female, rich or poor, educated or uneducated, all of us, according to Paul, have come short of the glory of God. We are all sinners condemned and in desperate need of salvation. All of us, Paul says. And yet, our attempt to save ourselves, our attempt to pull ourselves out of this situation through legalistic obedience, through our own works, come up short. We could not and cannot save ourselves. Then the question is asked, so what then is the solution? The good news of the gospel Paul offers. To us, true Christ gave us the radiant of hope. So Paul presented the good news of the gospel that is only through the gospel. God in in his infinite grace has done the unimaginable. He has given us a free gift, complete pardon, and reconciliation through faith in Christ Jesus. Jesus, who lived, died, and rose again, not for his own sake, but for our redemption and our restoration. So Paul made this argument that we could not save ourselves we were enemy, God loved us, and he saves us. Now, he pivoted in chapter 5, and he, he, he said, haven't we laid this foundation of righteousness by faith, righteousness that can come only through Jesus Christ? Paul proceeded to reveal the treasures that are in store for those who embark on this transformative journey. If we were enemies, God showed his love for us, And then what happened? So, the verse that Adasa read so beautifully in Romans chapter 5 verse 10 says, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Paul's message is profoundly comforting. Because in Romans chapter 5, the phrase stands out much more. Repeated not once, not twice, but five times. Much more. What could Paul mean by this? What could Paul mean by the word much more? More is okay, but much more. What could Paul mean by this? Paul's message is comforting. And this is the argument Paul is putting forward. If Christ died for us when we were sinners, when we were enemy, we can be rest assured that he will save us now that we have been justified, now that we are his friends, now that we have been saved. Much more. His love for us is vast and profound. He is willing to give his life for his enemy. How much more will he save from his wrath? By bearing the burden of sin, Christ has paved the path for us to return to God's favor. He is offering us a ticket back to Aden home. Without Christ's sacrifice, we could, not, we could have faced the inevitable consequence of our sins. Rebellion final destruction, and eternal death. Yet, this is the beauty of God's love. Truly shines that despite this deep, his deep hatred for sin, his love for our sinners is even greater. So Paul makes this argument that 
if we have such a compelling evidence of God's love, God's boundless love for us, even when we were sinners, what a solid foundation this gives us for our faith. It is on this basis that we can find true peace, overflowing joy, steadfast hope, and ultimate salvation. This is what we call assurance of salvation. If we were sinners, God showed his love for us much more. Much more will he love us. Much more does he comfort us in our sorrows. Much more does he strengthen us in our weakness. Much more does he guide us on our path. Much more does he provide us with spiritual nourishment. Much more does he forgive us for our mistakes. Much more does he help us grow in faith and righteousness. Much more does he offer us his divine companionship. Much more does he lead us towards righteousness and truth. Much more does he have in store for us in this life and the life to come? So when the children sing, you love Jesus more today because we believe Paul's words and comforting words that if he save us while we were yet sinners, much more will he love us. And greater love has no man than this, than the man gave his life for us. May we reflect on the abundant love of God for us. Amen. Amen. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. John 13, verse 35. By this, by this, all will know that you are my disciples. If you love, if you have love for one another, by this. The greatest teachers in history are often reflected in the actions and the attitude of their student. If we think about the attributes of our Savior Jesus Christ, one quality stands out among all others. Love. Love. His life, his ministry, his sacrifice 
It says, we're all grounded in a love that transcended understanding. Our Lord Jesus did not merely preach about love. It is very easy to talk and preach about love. He lived it. His life was a living testament of love in action. And this is demonstrated, the same love is demonstrated to us today. Jesus said that this love, as we read from the book of John, this selfless, boundless love should be the hallmark of every disciple. There could be so many things Jesus could have listed as our banner, as our hallmark. But he says, the only way the world will know that you are my disciples. The hallmark of the church is love. You know, some of us, maybe we get tired about hearing the word. Because the meaning and the value of this world has been be messed up in our world today. But Jesus says the hallmark of every disciple is love. It is love above all else that marks us as Christians. So, each one of us, as followers of Jesus, are called to embody this kind of love. And I'm repeating the word, this love. Because there are so many types of love in our world today. But Jesus is talking about this love. The love he showed us. That selfless, boundless love he exhibited to us. This love is what he's talking about. We should love everyone. Amen? Amen. We should love everyone. We should love everyone. Even the people who have a hard time loving us back. Even our enemies. Even those who hate us. Even those who curse us. We should love everyone. It doesn't matter. That is this love he's talking about. Love doesn't, this love, not the love that only love those who love you back. He's talking about this love. I'm pretty sure nobody have enemy in this house. Amen? But if you do, this love, God says, love everyone. So in conclusion... This love is something that we are called to show. It's not easy, nor is it always convenient, yet it is through the practice of this love that we truly reflect our master Jesus Christ. And it's by this love that the world will know that we are his disciple. Let us strive to show Jesus' kind of love in our interaction with others, and in everything we do. For it is by this love that we will truly show we are his disciple. May God empower us so that we can live out this love. And may his name be glorified in all our action. Amen. Jesus is my all in all. Were you fed this morning? Were you blessed? Maybe you're over full. You know we have a tendency when we're over full, 
we want to sleep. But I hope that what you learned this morning will help us to understand Jesus loves us. We need to have that love. And it's the only way that he can save us. So I'm going to ask you to stand now as we sing, Jesus save. Before Elder Sub gives his benediction, I just want the kids, when, you, when he's finished, just remain seated. There's something that we're going to give you, Elder Seth. Church, what do we say to our young ones? Yeah. I know a lot of work goes into this, and I see how Sister Ruth and the team have worked so hard for so many months, so many practice. Uh, so what do we say to Sister Ruth and the team? God bless you for putting this together, and the kids are our future, and any opportunity we can get to really let them love church and use their talent to praise God, we will be willing to open the door for that. So God bless you guys for, you know, singing to the glory of heaven, and I know heaven is happy to hear your voice today. Amen. Let's bow for prayer. Father, we are so grateful that you gave us Jesus. He is our all in all. When we accept him, we have everything. We can get everything without him is nothing. So let these words that we've heard today help us rearrange our priority and seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all will be given unto us. Thank you for your blessing we have received in this Sabbath day. Continue to bless us as you've promised to bless us on the Sabbath day. In Jesus' name, and for his mighty sake, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 So you guys be seated. and.